So I just want to ask you a very specific question, Mr. Mm. Thompson, reminding you that you're under oath today. Do you know whether there are verbal briefings cascaded through the business that require your managers to tell your postal workers to deprioritize letters? Well, hello there, and I do hope you're all well. Now, do you remember this little weasel? Yes, it's Simon Thompson, Chief Executive Officer for the Royal Mail. And do you remember the last time he was at a Business Energy Industrial Strategy Committee meeting on the chair, Darren Jones quizzed him about, uh, you remember when he brought up that, that piece of paper about uh, prioritising parcels over letters, and he denied it. Well, in yesterday's Business Energy and Dis Industry Strategy Committee meeting, he was accompanied by Keith Williams, Chair of the International Distribution Services, PLC, and... Ricky McCauley, Operations Development Director for the Royal Mail. And as you heard there, they were under oath this time. And let's just say the subject of prioritising parcels over letters came up again. And let's just say it was brutal. And he got filleted. Enjoy, my friends, and take care. Uh, where well, we'll be talking about the uh, obligation on Royal Mail to deliver letters six days a week, or what we refer to as the Universal Service Obligation, or the USO. Uh, Mr Thompson, uh, Ruth Edwards asked you a number of questions about this on the 17th of January, and she asked whether it was Royal Mail policy to prioritise parcels over letters. And you said, quote, no, that is absolutely not true. And you went on to say, quote, our policy is very clear that letters and parcels are equal. Do you stand by those answers? Do. Can I have the next image displayed on the screen, please? This was the poster I referred to in the last uh, session, which showed that letters were being deprioritized compared to track items, special delivery, and parcels. If I could remove the image from the screen, please. Um, since then, uh, you've provided the committee with a letter from two of your employees um, at the Gloucester North Delivery Office, where Sorry to jump in here, but what I will say is uh, I did a video on this uh, when it came to that uh, piece of uh, evidence there, and I will link it either above or down below in the description. But that's if I remember, you know, brain like a like a like sawdust these days. So I'll try to remember. They say that this was a poster they had done. They put it up. Uh, it was an error. It was only up for 15 hours, and it was to do with health and safety, not with real instructions about prioritising letters or parcels uh, differently. Um, you stand by this submission? I do, I and just a little, uh, just to add a little bit more, uh, Chair, if you don't mind. Is really, that, is it, time, I just want to know if you stand by this, that it was a one-off rogue poster. That now, when I hear that, when I hear that, that tells me, He's got a little something up his sleeve. Well, absolutely. That is, I thought that Shane and Peter came forward and were very clear that that was their poster and it was not something that had been done centrally and they had done it based on the circumstances in the Gloucester North Delivery Office. Okay, thank you. I'm now just going to refer to a number of images before I then come back to questions. <coughs> so if I can show image six on the screen, please. This is a typed up version, I think, of the same poster from a different delivery office in a different part of the country which essentially deprioritizes letters before tract items and parcels. If I could go to image seven, please. This is another version of a poster that's been typed up and attached to a rack in another delivery office in another part of the country, which says if you're unable to complete letters, you can do it the next day, and you've got to focus on tract and special delivery items. Uh, image eight, please. Uh, this is a script for managers to read out in their huddles on the kind of delivery office floor from another part of the country which essentially says the same thing. Uh, image nine, please. Uh, this is a, uh, a, a pop-up whiteboard that was from another delivery office in another part of the country, which said, do not prep one letter unless you're basically taking everything else first. And the next image, please. Uh, this is another version of a written version of that poster from another delivery office in another part of the country um, uh, that says the same uh, thing. And I think, is there another image? Yeah, and this was the set of instructions that were given in another delivery office in another part of the country that says mail is to be delivered at a minimum every other day. If I could stop broadcasting the images, please. Are all of these rogue posters, Mr. Thompson, or do you not know what's going on in your business? No, not all of them are. 
The rogue managers, again, obviously. Oh, posters, and when I answer the question, I answer it again. Our policy is absolutely clear that parcels and, uh, sorry, letters and parcels have exactly the same priority. Why are there so many posters in delivery yeah. offices all across the country that say the complete opposite of what you've just said to the committee? No, I, I understand the, the question. Of course, what we see here is what happens on days of industrial action where we have to take a different uh, policy and something that is actually being discussed with Ofcom and also something that we publish on our website. On days of industrial action, our reality is, is if we don't have a, maybe around about 100,000 of the team actually in, the reality is, is we cannot deliver our normal standard of service and have to take some different choices. And that is what we have to do and that is what you're seeing. But if, it, but if it's all right with, with yourself, I think, Ricky, you were involved with these discussions around what we do in industry. Just before I invite days, Mr. McCauley so. to come in, I, I just want to say to you, Mr. Thompson, we've also been sent video footage and audio recordings of discussions between managers and postal workers of huddles on the delivery office shop floor, not just during periods running up to or during industrial action, but over many, many months with a delivery office manager saying to the postal workers in a particular office, look, we've breached the USO for three years in a row. Just do as I tell you. You've got to take out the tracked items and the parcels first. If you haven't got the capacity or the time to deliver the letters, do not worry about it. So I just want to ask you a very specific question, Mr. Mm. Thompson, reminding you that you're under oath today. Do you know whether there are verbal briefings cascaded through the business that require your managers to tell your postal workers to deprioritize letters. Do you know that there are verbal briefings cascaded through the business with that instruction, yes or no? I'm not, I'm not, a, I'm not aware of that as a policy at all. You're not aware. Mr. McCauley, are you aware? Uh, if, I, if I could expand, because I think... I asked you a question. Are you aware that there are verbal briefings being cascaded through the business that tell postal workers to deprioritize letters, yes or no? In case of industrial action, yes. Before industrial that was, you see the pause there, that told me, oh, I don't really want to say this, but I'm under oath. That's what it felt like to me. Industrial action. Uh, on the day of industrial action Before and industrial. in recovery. Before industrial action. Well, industrial action has been going on for six months. And prior to that, we had a global pandemic that impacted the business for 18 months. Both had a set of contingency arrangements that were shared with Ofcom very openly. Uh, they did require... For, for, for safety reasons, and just to give some, some context, the cubic volume of parcels in our network, if we don't at times keep parcels moving, the network will grind to a halt. Ofcom gave you notice of this during the pandemic. When you didn't meet your obligations in the pandemic, Ofcom said, fine, there was an increase in parcels and you needed to construct your business and your sites to handle that. They did not allow you to carry on with that excuse for very long, and you're still claiming that's the reason why. I'm not. I'm saying six months of industrial action is the reason why. So now it's the industrial action following the pandemic. It's got nothing to do with raw mail policy. It's being briefed through managers to tell postal workers to deprioritise their letters. Absolutely not. Chair, can I just make one fight? I did write to the committee a couple of days ago, and I understand you might still be... I don't know whether you had a chance to read my I've read letter. read everything, Mr Thompson. Yeah, well, yeah. One, one of the, the facts that we actually shared was we shared USO performance of letters versus parcels, and what it actually showed is that uh, letter performance was marginally better than parcels performance for USO products. It showed that very, very clearly. And I think that is an outcome, an output of what we have. The other thing as well is that when I check the USO regulation, the, the target that we are given from a USO perspective is a total target. It's not something that's separated for parcels or for letters. I'm aware of the USA target. You don't need to explain it to me, uh, Mr. Thompson, uh, with, with respect. Uh, just to go to testimonies around the USO, because again, we have emails from postal workers pretty much across the entire country, too many to be able to read out to you today. Uh, for Scotland, for example, um, managers were telling us over Christmas to leave mail and concentrate on track parcels over anything else if we couldn't manage mail to just leave it. Mail was often left in the frames for days, including doctor's letters and more. Uh, same in London, uh, another location. In the lead up to Christmas, we were told on a daily basis to leave mail and deliver parcels. Um, I have a, a message here from a processing manager who says, posties have told you in deliveries and processing if, they are completing, if there are competing priorities between parcels and tracked items, priority is given to those over letters. And as managers, we are told to do this by our managers. I have another email from a national senior manager 
who has said it has absolutely been the case that all operational units have been instructed to prioritise parcels and to leave letters. This has been the case since the beginning of November. I have another example uh, from Scotland, from Sussex, from Bath, from Stafford Staffordshire, from London, uh, from Wales. So someone from Wales tell me that the way that management look at whether letters are being delivered, if you put them in a box under the table as opposed to putting them into the, um, into the rack, it's treated differently. Um, I could go on and on and on. A postman from Cambridgeshire, for at least the last 18 months, we have been told on a daily basis through huddles on the shop floor from our line manager that we are to prioritise tracks packets over letters. You have not been delivering your universal service obligation of delivering letters six days a week for some time. That's right, isn't it, Mr Thompson? Yes, I think that's right, and I mentioned that last time, but I'd just like to pick up on a couple of things that you said there. You mentioned November, you mentioned December. If you take December, we had seven days of industrial action between the start of uh, December and actually the 24th of December. Now, let's just put this into context. We delivered, during that period of time, around about 600 letters a second, and around about 100... The victim hood now... 130, 140 uh, parcels per second. If we have a situation where there is one day of industrial action, particularly with letters, which is a huge volume, the ability to be able to catch that back up is a real challenge. And Ricky, I don't know if you want to add, add to that based no, on... No, I've not... Yeah, throw me out under the bus. I've not finished yet, I'm afraid. I will call you Mr McCauley when I'm ready to hear from you. Looking at the transcript, Mr Thompson, from when you were here last time, you were asked a very direct question. Postal workers have been told to prioritise parcels over letters. Is this accurate? Question mark. You said to this committee, no, that is absolutely not true. Today, you're saying it is true, aren't you, Mr Thompson? It's not our policy, but in realities of industrial action, we have to apply a different policy. You're recognising... That's not what he said before. Recognising that what you told the committee last time was inaccurate. No, I think it's the context. When, when I was asked last time, what I heard was, is there a policy of doing a different set of... And the answer is no. And I think what we see in the numbers here for quarter one and quarter two is very clear that actually our letter performance is slightly ahead of our parcels performance, and that is the factual reality of the outcome in terms of the customer piece. What I should have been clearer on is that at moments of industrial action, when we have that mass disruption, then there is a different application of policy, which we actually publicise on our website and also discuss with Ofcom as well, which is an operational reality, which Ricky has also referenced. The problem is that you weren't listening to the question as opposed to misleading the committee with your answer. Is that what you're telling us today? I heard a different context. You heard a different question? A different context. That's your answer. I mean, it's quite remarkable. I mean, Mr Williams, whether it's on the use of PDA and the way you discipline workers or rank workers against each other, whether it's on the verbal briefings very clearly cascading through the business, telling postal workers to do something, and then coming to this committee and telling us that that's not true, are there really that many rogue managers and postal workers dispersed through the entire Royal Mail network going against company policy, uh, or is all of this just a sham? Well, um if you, if you look at the size of Royal Mail, it's, it's 115,000 workers. So it's, it's, you know, it can fill Wembley Stadium. How many State. rogue managers do you think you have? How many rogue postal workers do you think you have? The thousands of emails we've received since the last session <coughs> telling us the way things operate in your business. And all of you are telling us today that they're all wrong. Well, all I can go by is the evidence that I see um, and on the feedback that I see from 50,000 people 50,000 people, is that those 50,000 people, the trust score in their manager, in their manager, I'm has increased. I'm not asking you about the trust in their manager. I'm asking about Royal Mail's delivery of the universal service obligation. Surely as chair of the board, as a board, you should have grave concerns about this state of affairs. So, um, between March 2020 and August 2022, Ofcom accepted that the quality of service would not be ideal. They accepted that because absence at Royal Mail was running at anything up to 18.1%. So one in five workers was absent. Yeah. Um, so Ofcom accepted during that period that the quality of service would not meet its target. After August 2022, that, that has now disappeared. And we look at quality of service as a board. Every board meeting every week even at the moment on quality of service, given the industrial action. Well, I've spoken to Ofcom, 
uh, and Mr. Thompson, I'll just come back to you here to just check what your obligations are. And they've said to me that if there's any failure of Royal Mail to offer a six days per week letters delivery service, any failure, that is a breach of the USO. There is clear evidence today, I think you've admitted it, that you've not been able to deliver the six days per week letter delivery obligation. You've blamed the industrial action for that and previously you blamed, blamed the pandemic for it. Ofcom have said that if there's evidence of a systemic failure to seek to offer six days per week letter delivery service, that is a breach that requires investigation and potential enforcement. I'm putting it to you today, Mr. Thompson, that there is a systemic failure because you have verbal briefings going through your managers to your postal workers repeatedly over many, many months across the whole country that says, do not worry about delivering your letters for six days a week. Do you recognize that, yes or no? As I wrote in my letter, Chair, it was very, very clear as I wrote in my letter and I gave evidence Including communication, including communications from myself. On March 2022, I wrote a column in the Curry magazine that was sent to every employee's home that made it very, Mr. very Thompson, clear. Mr Thompson, I'm not asking you about a column that you wrote in a magazine. I'm asking you whether you recognise that the fact that managers through your business are verbally cascading briefings to postal workers to not worry about letters being delivered every single day for six days of the week, that that by its very nature is a systemic failure because it is a system-wide failure. I'm asking you whether you agree with that, yes or no. We do everything that we can to do make Do you sure agree with what I just said, yes or no? Can I, just for clarity again, Chair, just so that I'm clear on the question so I can answer it clearly, please. Is there a systemic failure, a system-wide failure, at Royal Mail to deliver letters every day for six days each week because there are verbal briefings cascaded through the business that tell postal workers not to worry about delivering letters every day for six days a week. That is a system-wide failure. It is a systemic failure. It is therefore a breach of your universal service obligation. Do you recognise the system-wide failure that is currently taking place at Royal Mail? I totally understand, based on the Not understand. US... I, do you agree with me, yes or no? The, our USL performance has definitely not been good do enough. Do you agree with me that it is a system-wide failure, yes or no? or no. Go on, Simon Thompson. Just say yes. You know you want to. It's hard for... I'm, I'm sorry, Chair, and I can see that you're getting frustrated with it. I do I'd not like you to answer the yeah, question. I, I can see you're getting frustrated with it. I do not recognise those briefings. I understand... Do you you disagree. Thompson? There's a system-wide failure. You disagree with that. No, we are definitely not achieving USO, and as I've said in correspondence and said around this committee many times, that it is my commitment to make sure we're doing better, and I would like to say that what I've seen recently is we are definitely doing better.